Welcome to the Stogie Geek Show, episode 105. This episode is sponsored by Mr. J. Savannah Smoke Shop, located here in Rhode Island. They have an outstanding selection of premium handmade cigars. And by the Havana Cigar Club, here in Rhode Island as well. It's a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stokey Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. And by Debonair Cigars. Visit stokeygeeks.com forward slash debonair for a list of retailers who carry Debonair. Buy some today and get a little more debonair. And buy Ocean State Cigars. Try the Jay Grotto series, including the Connecticut Shade Silk, now available in a limited edition Lancero. You can visit them on the web at OceanStateCigars.com. Welcome, everyone, to this edition of the Stogie Geek Show. I'm your host, Paul Asadorian, joined here to my right by none other than Stogie Santa. Good evening, everybody. On the lines via Skype, we've got Mr. Will Cooper. Welcome, Will. Greetings, guys. And also on the lines via Skype, we've got a very special guest for this evening, which ties into our smoke of the week. Mr. Phil Zangi from Debonair Cigars has joined us. Welcome, Phil, to the show. Hello, everybody. Hola. Blessings. Yes, it's very nice to have you back on the show, Phil. You're looking very executive in your, uh, <laughs> in your shot there. It's very nice. It looks like you're the leader of a third world country. A little Mussolini. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's very nice. Very nice background there. Um, you so, have to have aspirations, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Of course, this segment is brought to you by Debonair Cigars. Again, you can visit stogiegeeks.com forward slash Debonair for a list of retailers. Now, Phil, that list might be a little dated. Can you tell us about some of the retailers that you might have added in the past couple of months to your repertoire of shops that carry fine Debonair cigars? I mean, Mr. Cooper helped me get into some stores in um, in uh, North Carolina. It's, I, I, I almost forget the name. I think it's Twin City Smoke Shop. Right. In um in um in Charlotte, North Carolina. Then we're in a rain city out in um the West Coast in uh Seattle. And um I've gotten some but I could tell you for this year, the show we just I probably gonna talk about today, the show um I, I closed some new good accounts, some strong accounts, but my, my core accounts like the Mr. J's and the Owl Shop and the Twins and um, the people up uh, in the Northeast have really gone heavy. It's it's really taking ground in the Northeast. And I think that's actually helping me with stores around America because they see the portfolio of the stores that I'm selling in in the, in the true smoking areas, you know, in the Northeast. And I think it's, it's, it's actually helping me immensely, you know. Um, I just don't have the list with me. I know that we've, we're probably in a 10 or 12 new stores since off that, on that list that you have there. Okay, yeah, we'll make sure we get it updated as well, for sure. Absolutely. Um, now, Phil, the last time you were on the show, we talked about your Maduro. Um, mm-hmm. We maybe Did we smoke it on the show? We might have even smoked it on the show. You did. Uh, you did. We, we did. Yeah, out. we smoked it on the show. Um, and you've released it at IPCPR. Um, so tell us a little bit, uh, you remind people, you know, what the wrapper is and, and the sizes and, uh, what can we expect from, uh, the Maduro version of the debonair? Basically what it is, it's the exact same Vitolas or sizes that are the Robusto, the Bellicoso, the Toro, the Saguita and the first degree. But what all I did is I changed the wrapper. I put a Connecticut broadleaf Maduro on it that I naturally sweated for almost, I'd say almost to come to about 12 months. Nice. And then um, it was sweated, then we rolled it, then we aged it for about nine months. And um, I think it came out, the, the response has been incredible. I mean, people that like, it was sometimes when you when you change just the wrapper from the core blend, people don't really, you know, they, they're looking for something, they're looking for the original taste of like the Havano, you know, but I see that the people that have, have got the debonair maduro with them with you know that like the havano are absolutely crazy for the maduro mm-hmm. and um, yeah. it's uh it's heightened its game it's it's, it's a t- totally different cigar paul can attest to that and you guys can it's but it still has his debonair qualities um but i mean i've been smoking them really heavily lately and i love my dark havano don't get me wrong but i'm telling you the toro in the in the um maduro it's something it's it's something special it's so sweet 
Um, I don't want to blow my own horn. I think it's really good. I, th- I worked really hard at it, and um, I'm really pleased and blessed that people have accepted it you know, now, off Phil, the bat. Uh, the Maduro, is that available, the Salomon size, is that also available in the Maduro wrapper? No, not, that's, that's, that's the white whale. I mean, there might be some somewhere, but no, they're not available. Okay, <laughs> so what do I need to do to negotiate for one? I'm willing to give up a lot for it because I love the Salomon. It's it's probably one of my favorites. No, Phil, in the line. use this. I, I'll interrupt. Phil, we don't have any. We don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would give a lot. I would. What is it like? I'd walk a mile for a camel. Like I would give a lot for. A, a, you gotta ask the guy in the picture. He knows where they're at. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to elaborate on a Toro if I can. Um, Please. At, at the show, I thought it smoked well. But like anybody who puts out a Connecticut broadleaf, we know the first thing that comes in mind is being just a little bit more wet than normal cigars. It was smoking. You, you just knew. I knew where this was going to be at just from the show. Right now, this went from a, a real good tasting c- cigar to a unbelievable sweet cigar that is just off the charts. It, it, this is where I knew it was going to be. You know, it, it just takes a little bit. It's just not me. Someone that's been in the cigar business in a while or a cigar smoker can judge what a cigar is going to be down the road. And it did not let me down. I just knew this is where it's going to be. What a difference, Phil. What a difference. Thank you. It's yeah, really, Phil, really you know, you know from the inception, I've talked to you guys from the beginning of yep. – especially uh, Sogi Santa there um, from when I first met him that I was going to do this. And he had smoked the first – Ones I even did as a test mm-hmm. when he came down and visited, and the look on his face was—I pro- wish I would have—I would have put that on YouTube and got a million hits. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was. Um, and it's 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 it's. I don't know. How to, I don't want to blow my own horn. I mean, I sound like oh, like, no, oh, you know, like the word chill, but I'll it's take it. I can attest to that. He it's turned came out, back I can't, raving about that. I can't that. take really credit because the the rapper itself comes from a really amazing farmer that really takes it. Um, to a next level, and then my my uncle in the Dominican Leo, he cures it the way exactly it should be done, like naturally sweated and force sweated, and with the distilled waters and the the steams and everything, and and um, it just takes a lot of time. But it's 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 I think it's shown what it's gonna be, oh. like he says in another in another couple months or another. Oh. If you let that sit for a year more, I don't oh. even know what it would be. It, right, exactly. Uh, and 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 to get back to what we're saying, we're, we were down at the factory. We're smoking a great cigar in Don Julio, we were, and we're doing different blends. Right. And I had no idea, no idea what he gave me. And and I and asked Phil within. Uh, was it a uh, Philly blunt? Oh, it was the best Philly blunt you ever smoked. <laughs> it, it was just unbelievable. <laughs> I just said, "This is." I knew right then and there that not that he needs my uh, confirmation. I said, "This is this is going to be something special," and he just. As usual, lives up to expectations. So, Phil, I, I have kind of a – it's kind of a silly question that just came to my mind. But so you got this plant that's the tobacco plant, right? And the leaves, yes, are, all, the leaves are all green and it's growing. And now you just described a process that was over a year before you get the leaves to a point before you put them on a cigar. Like how do you right. know from the plant like what it's going to taste like? So is that process then doubled? Like do you have to take that plant, go through the whole process, and then – play around with the blends and then say well that one's pretty good but now you've already taken it off the plant so you have to grow new plants and hope that they come out the same even before you have a cigar to bring to market no those are known i mean you're talking that strain that that uh tobacco strain from uh the broadleaf strain from the connecticut river valley yeah it's, okay it's, it's a known you know what it's got how it's going to react but there's you can't shorten it you can't cheat it to say that yeah yeah i got lack of a better term you have to I mean, the people that have been messing with for so many years, I mean, you're talking, you know, some guys, five generations, they know if you do it a certain way in the certain double A darks and the, the top grade that you're getting, you know, if you let it sit for that a certain amount of times, the sugar contents in it and just the way the oil's in it and the way to sit, like you had Nick on there. Nick's a real big, Nick, yeah, Nick Melio, yeah. you know, he's a real big broadleaf guy and he's kind of one of the guys, I got to give him credit that kind of, I was using a lot of Pennsylvania broadleaf. And um, he's like, why, why, you know, try the Connecticut. And I got some and I cured it the way that, you know, they told me to. And then I took it to another couple steps and it's, um, it's, ter- it, it, it's just a really great leaf. It, it gives some serious depth, depth and flavor. Once you get it sweated to the point where you get uh, all the ammonia out of it and a lot of the, the, you know, and you get a lot of the dirt or whatever's left in it out of it. And it just turns 
so spectacular, you know. And, but saying, I know what you're saying. Okay, you hang it in the bar. I mean, you know what it's gonna look. You know what it looks like. When when I get it, I get it. It's already been sat for maybe six to eight months there in Connecticut. Okay, okay. so that means it's been in a, a natural sweat in a four sweat in a building. So when I get it, I just do another process to it. Mm-hmm. Now, now, Phil, my my big thing with cigars is a combustion rate. And mm-hmm. sometimes, and, and and yours, your cigar, and a couple others that, that really uh, come to the forefront, is that something that I'm overstating? Because it, it 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 matches up and makes the cigar. Because if this was too chewy of a smoke or too loose of a draw, uh, that would change the flavor on that particular on, on this on any cigar. Don't you agree with that? Absolutely. With the combustion, I do. I mean, yeah. the, the the material placement. I mean, I've just. Right. I guess I keep. I sound blessed. I mean, when I did the debonair first blend, that was the first blend. Mm-hmm. I didn't do a bunch of blends. I had mm-hmm. been messing with stuff for a long time, but that one, I said, okay, this is the materials I think that are going to work. We did it. I did the alchemy to it, and it, that was the Havano. and that was like when I first launched it. It was basically a prototype. Mm-hmm. I mean, thirteen thousand cigars, and five thousand of those were Solomon's. And I mean, with the size that nobody really wanted, then I made a Bellicoso that everyone says never sells in a store, and then a Robusto. And I mean, I, I mean, I was just, I guess I was just divinely guided by that because it worked. And then I just said, well, you know, with the blend, it's the core blend I believe in. Everyone believes in that. I think with a really good, well-cured Maduro, I think it's going to bring it to another level. And, which, mm-hmm. and, and I think it, it's done that, you know? Oh, there's no doubt about that. Yeah, and, and speaking of combustion rate, my and you know I'm notorious for getting cigars that have horrible construction. And I tell mm-hmm. you what, I when I lit up this Bellicoso, it was just a perfect amount of smoke, perfect combustion rate. It was absolutely, it was awesome, and, awesome. And, and know it's burn. funny. Uh, you know what I thought about the belly on the Habano, right? Of you course. Love that. Yeah. Okay, that is well, it's still my favorite. Okay, but in this blend. And I smoked, if I haven't smoked 15 of each one, I haven't smoked <laughs> one. It's the Toro. Hands but you're down. right about the belly in the Havano. The longer it sits, oh. the better it is. Absolutely. Oh, that thing is off the charts. It well, is. There's no, that's my favorite belly. There's so not even a, there's not a, there's not a two. To there's speak to the two. Maduro, I'm smoking the belly in the Maduro. And it has a date on the back of the band of June 25th of 2014. And that's the date it's boxed. It's packed. It's that's, packed. The, that's what I get. Right. A big, I get a lot of confusion. People love that. But they say, wow, that was the day. I, say, I, I have to say, I mean, I, mean, I just got to put it out there more. That's the day it's packed. I right. gotcha. So you, you go with that date. You go eight months back is the day it was rolled. Mm-hmm. Okay. On the okay. Materials. And the minimum on the, on the Havano is 90 days. It can be six months. It can be like five months. I mean, that's the, so that's the, the way I use that is that's traceability. So right. I know Love it. when th- there's right. batches that I, I do, you know, I pack and I ship them, I pack and I ship them. So I only do maybe three or four shipments a year. So I know when those dates are, I know I can trace it back to when they were packed and when they, what trays they came out of, because I save all the tickets, you know, then I put them in a, we put them in a computer and we know when, when it's just like a traceability thing. Mm. Yeah, I, as a consumer, though, that's a really awesome thing oh, to it have. It truly is. Yeah. And, it, and, and I mean, to have this to be boxed on, on June 25th and smoke as awesome as it is. It is. is it's it's, it's great for the consumer, but yeah. it's more important to Phil where he can find out what's right. going down if right. there's a, a little yeah, change you, in the blend. You could say, hey, look, this one was weird. You know, I mean, it's a natural product. It's a handmade product. I do. I mean, I've been blessed that I've got very few complaints, but I've had some and I'm like, I go back and I look at it and I, of course I replaced them. And they're like, well, you know, just for you were saying that, that you went back and looked and I proved that I looked at it and I found out what it was and maybe it was something, you know, I mean, it was just, you know, you know, you never know because, because I mean, Nesta Placentia told me a famous saying, if you're in the tobacco business, you got to remember one thing. Tobacco is always against its owner. The yeah. day you cut that plant, it hates you. It's <laughs> dead. You killed That's it. Great. So now it wants to rot. It wants That's to get mold great, on it. It wants point. to break apart. It, is, it, is it wants point. to do all kinds of things to you because. But you got if you if you know that going into it, except then when you bought the cigar, a lot of times. I mean, I've had t- times where I've done testings with people and, and flavoring and stuff. And I mean, trust me, I picked out the best or whatever, and you give it to them, and that thing burns. It, it the canoes on one side, or the ash is weird, and it, you just don't know because it's it, it's against the. It's a weird thing, you know. It's a weird dynamic. So, Phil, how was the uh, the IPCPR show for you? Honestly, it was. I could say it was regular. Yeah. I did well. Mm-hmm. I I mean, considering some of the people I've spoke to, I did really well, but. Um, 
it was just a strange. I've been to a lot of them, and this year was, I think it had to do with just statistics. 25% less attendees, 30% bigger. Um, I swore a couple of times I saw tumbleweeds going down the aisles, right. you know? See, you see th- that's a great question because I'm going to put something towards you. This number I know f- for a fact, New England, only 14 stores, uh, 14 retailers showed up, and six of them were right here in Rhode Island. That's right. an alarming rate, and that was across yeah. the board. Now, my question, the second part of this, well, I shouldn't say this, my first part, Phil, as a manufacturer, what do we got to do to bring attendance up? If you could put a, uh, two, que- well, not, uh, two answers to that or one, what do you think our first thing we got to do to fix the attendance for the show? To do, truly have a deal for the show only. Mm-hmm. because I think a lot of stuff that there's so many, it's so event heavy now out there that I've mm-hmm. seen where when I started the industry, I mean, there was it, events were few and far between. There were like, you know, you know, d- uh, smoking dinners and there was like, but now you see there's could be events in some stores that I go to. There's an event a week, you know, and these people are already doing big deals with these guys, you know, buy this, buy right, that, right, right. Um, you know, buy back. So basically why would a guy spend Two hundred dollars a night on a hotel room, five hundred to thousand dollars on a ticket, another couple hundred dollars a night out doing stuff, where they could get the same kind of deals at a show. Mm-hmm. And what they get in, some guy walks in your shop, you don't have to leave your cash register, you know. Yeah. And saying that in, the, in, I mean, you can't blame the venue. You're talking Las Vegas, Nevada. I mean, that's where people you can smoke there. You can do whatever you want. Um, size too. I think the size they should tighten it up. You know. Mm-hmm. I mean, keep it to the point where there's everyone's close to each other so some of the little guys are just trying to, uh, next to a bigger guy get some overflow you know mm-hmm. you see some of the stuff there where the other uh, some of the more successful shows I've seen where all the guys on the big guys like surrounded them so there was a lot of overflow from the big guys into the little guy shops you know right and the new outfits. I don't know. It was, I don't know. I, I've thought about it a lot of cops kind of stopped thinking about it because it made my head hurt. It just was a weird mm-hmm. it was a it was just a weird show. I don't know what to say more than yeah, that. Everyone you know, said that to me. I yeah, thought it was well, just know, me, but everyone said, no, didn't it seem strange? Know, I'm like... Yeah, you know what's interesting, Phil, is I, I went to a, a computer security show, which happened after IPCPR uh, in Vegas, and it was the same kind of deal, right? The venue had grown, and they switched to a larger space, and it felt kind of weird. Like, when you said the tumbleweeds kind of rolling through the aisles, that really resonated with me because it was yeah. kind of the same thing. They're like, oh, we're growing, so we're going to grow to a bigger space, but it, it kind of takes away from that intimate kind of atmosphere um and the same thing you said you know big people next to the smaller booths to get the overflow like that stuff wasn't happening because it was so spread out but it was here's what i'm thinking because you like phil made a great point there's there's no need to name names because we all know who it is these pre-show deals to get this and that okay uh the first thing i thought about was maybe change the date that's never going to happen it's always going to be that time of the year because there's so many different things going on if you're going to put a a show deal together, you buy this. Well, the manufacturer will put that, but if you, like Phil said, if you come to the show, you get a 5% discount or whatever it happens to be, and I think that's going to be the only thing that, that will, 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 will actually manipulate the show. I, I really, or, or not manipulate, but bring, like Phil was saying. Enhance it. Enhance yeah. it. Back to what it used to be. We're right. I, I, oh. Never mind free boxes or this something you don't need or 400 boxes or something that doesn't sell Whatever happens to be, I don't mean to be, the numbers are crazy, but we don't get it. But like with the, uh, what Phil was doing, uh, we he, you know, by the time you made a deal with with Phil and a couple other people, it was all worth coming. Awesome. If we all do it, yeah. so it's, I mean, that's what people are doing. They're offering. You're never going to stop that that pre-show deal. It's it's bigger and larger before, but just put that discount. Okay, here's our show deal. Okay, pre-show. We shouldn't be doing it, but it's always it's getting more and more manufacturers and, and uh, the, the foot of the feet of being held to the fire by the retailers. The, re- it, it, the manufacturer's hands are really tied. I, I feel that way. So you got to look at this way. I don't blame the store owner. I mean, mm-hmm. they're my bread and butter, and I love you guys. Mm-hmm. I, why would you come when right, right. you can sit there and you're getting serviced? Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, uh, 
That's it's just the- weird. I mean, I can't blame anyone, but it's true though because I had a, you know, this year I hired I hired a girl that does 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 introduction calls. She doesn't do sales calls. She says, "Hi, I work for Debonair. Um, I'm, I'm doing this, and we're just calling to introduce ourselves and stuff like that." And then she must have contacted eighty people, and fifty of them said, "Yeah, they were coming, you know, and we'll come meet you." And we had appointments. I'm telling you, I said forty didn't come. Hmm. And I mean, I was—I know who they were, so I didn't see them. And I mean, right. every night we all know we went to that same bar. Everyone went there, yeah, you know. Yeah. And then, even when there was big events somewhere else, someone put parties on. Everyone ended up back at that same place. Yep. And I mean, they, they just weren't there, you know. And, and uh, without beating this to death, and this is this is where you, you look at it in, 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 in retrospect. It's just that we have to do something to enhance the retailers, if the the money they're putting out for flights and hotels. You have to do something yeah. because no, I agree. if you don't, it's it's just it, going to get it worse. It is more expensive than ever to make the uh, trip. So what's Phil, the, end up um, the last time you were on the show, you mentioned something that stuck in my mind, and you said you may be working on an A version of your blend. <laughs> really? Any wow. updates on that? Is it going to be the natural wrapper, the Maduro wrapper, time frame? I'm, work, I'm working on it. Um, I think you – I think I know uh, Mark's seen it. Did I? Um, it's, uh, it's going to be the limited edition yeah. for next year, I think, if it's ready, mm-hmm. but it's going to be in the same kind of format that the Solomon was in and, but it's going to be a little, it's going to be pretty cool. I got some really big stuff coming up, um, that I'm going to break with you guys and it's, uh, it's going to be a really big announcement. Um, I'm working with another, uh, really, really, really good advertising firm. That's why I'm in Nashville too these people and we got some really cool stuff coming up but yeah saying that um that's going to be the limited edition it's going to be an a size i'm still working on what the format's going to be how it's going to be either havana or maduro or both or you know something really interesting something that uh people are going to really want and it's going to be even more limited than the southern was i don't know if i'm gonna even make five thousand i think i'm gonna wow now you're gonna individually light yeah are you gonna like individually cough in each one of the a's um, I don't know yet. I can't. I, I don't know yet. I'm, I'm still thinking. Mm-hmm. I'm still thinking something really. It's got to be something really unique. Yeah. And then I'm thinking of um, doing a another size in in, in the line and mm-hmm. dropping one maybe and, and bringing leaving one not dropping it but taking it out of the production for a while and then putting something else in and then printing something. You know what I mean? And just keeping it not too many sizes. I think that if I like you know stop making one size, make another size, and then. And bring the, just bring sizes back, you know. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And just, you know oh, yeah. what I mean? Just change it up yeah. a little bit, but yeah, don't keep expanding take. the line so it's so much space. It's overwhelming. Because that's, right. yeah, no, you know what I mean. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so now, Phil, um, I'm kind of calling this the year of Lanceros. There's been a lot of amazing Lanceros that have been released. Have you played around with your blends in Lancero? Is that something that you, you know, have. You're uh, smoking the Saguita. That's a petite Lancero. Have you looked into a full size Lancero? No, not really. No, not okay. really. I might, but I like the petite. I do too. I agree. Yeah. It goes. It's the. It's. It meets the. It meets the criteria of a Corona too. Smoker. Yeah, yeah. And, you hit uh, both markets with it. Not smart. Very good. You know. Mm. That that's what I love about the Maduro. It makes me even crave the Habano even more. You know. It, it, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's, it, it it's not the Habano is it's is really really good. Then you smoke it. You go over the Maduro. You're in love, and then you revisit the Habano. This sounds silly. Not that I don't appreciate it, but I appreciate it even more now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It gives you two different distinct flavors. Absolutely. It, it's amazing well, it's with so, a wrapper. It's obviously yeah. still in the same family, right? And it just kind of gives Absolutely. you a It's the same that. exact blend. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. With a different wrapper. Oh, and, and a wrapper. Got oh, yeah. Exact. <laughs> yep. It's just. Uh, Will, Mr. Will Cooper, do you have uh, questions for Phil? Yeah, Phil, I just want to kind of make a comment here on, on the Maduro. My observation at the trade show this year, it was a huge year for Maduro. Um, there were a lot of Maduros released, and there were a lot of good Maduros. And there were probably only one or two that I think were really set apart from the pack. And I got to say, this Debonair Maduro is different than, I, and it's got that Debonair quality, as you said. I said it brings the sweetness together of Connecticut Broadleaf with a little bit of that Debonair au jus mixed in there. So. I really, take your hat off to this cigar. It, it is a fantastic cigar. Gee, uh, well, thank you so much. And you know what? You guys actually sit with me and give me the time. And like, and really, I really appreciate what you guys do because you actually give me true critique. That makes me up my game. And thank God I've never given anything that we didn't like so far. But, um, 
you know, there's been some, uh, you guys actually sit and smoke it and really give me the true take on it, you know, and I want to just thank you guys for that. And I'm not being corny or being a whatever, a kiss ass or whatever you want to call it. Same I just here, want to thank you for that. Oh, I mean, that's, I mean, uh, I, I get accused of that a little bit, but it's just, I don't care. It, 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 the cigar speaks for itself. What yeah. I, what I, when I look at Debonair, uh, to me, I take a little bit further because I'm so much behind the blend. I call it a classy cigar. And it makes you feel good, but it's not stuffy. You know, the whole experience of it is just Ooh. really unique for me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use that slogan. Thank you. Yeah, I like that. I really do. Yeah, Phil, and we thank you very much for your support. And uh, I appreciate the fact that you make yourself so accessible to everyone. Um, like you said, being a very classy cigar and oh, Phil making just, himself very accessible to, to, to winning combinations. I thank you so much. And, I mean, he's, he did a lot for it. Outstanding yeah. smokes, of course, as we've uh, reviewed on the show. And I, I, I can't wait to try – um, all of the different sizes in both wrappers. I think I'm pretty close. I love the Sagita and the Maduro. The Sagita might be my, my, my favorite size in both in both wrappers. I tell really? you, really, isn't that I, unique? Well, I because like Phil said, you know, I like the Corona and I like the Lancero, and that's a great size to represent kind of both those sizes. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why I really gravitate. As long as you like it. one of them, that's all I care. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. I, well, I like I like smoking them all. That's my conundrum. Oh, this Toro, this, this Toro. I could is, buy a I, box of everything. <laughs> really. We had that discussion. This uh, please do, please yeah, do, please do. I, we encourage you. everyone buy a box of everything. What we'll do? We're gonna we're gonna have to do a five pack for for of the uh, t of the Toro for a little raffle tonight. This thing is smoking off. Did I give shot. you some of those bags? Did I give you some of those? Those What's new that? sample bag things I made for the show. Did I give you? No, those I was supposed no. That, I, I was supposed to come back. We got you got busy. I got busy. We, we, yeah. we'll, we'll hook up. When you yeah. come up in September, we'll take uh, care of that. It, you know what's but, interesting, uh, though? You know what I'm really excited about with respect to debonair cigars? And it's kind of, we all love smoking them, and we do just that. We smoke them all. It doesn't stay in any of our humidors. The, I'd love to see what they would do if I put them away for six so, months and then a year, year well, and a half, yeah. two years. Mm -hmm. I'd love to see that transgression. The problem is they're just so good, I just smoke them. Well, what we're yeah. going to do on a closing note, Phil, you have to do this personal favor for me. When you come okay. up, please... So this way here, I'm going to be the shill of all shills on Mr. Debonair. Please bring those glasses up, the scotch glasses, so we can drink yeah. in, in a Debonair okay. way, please. Thank you. I, I, that's another. I'll bring a case of those things up yeah, there, no yeah, problem. I mean, put look, them on the, look yeah, at how absolutely. I'm drinking out of uh, like a Walmart special here. It is a Walmart special. You know they, what I mean? They break. That's I, I, why I, I, I don't I, like I, to I, buy I, nice glass yeah, right. Wait till you see the Debonair glasses. <laughs> That's cool. They're pretty cool. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I mean, you, oh, Phil, some of, I'm not going to give all the cool things out yet, but I got something else coming up in the Debonair line that's going to be um, – I'm working on it. I'm going to be picking your guys' brains with, throughout the about the next six months. I'm coming out with a extension to the line. We have Maduro and we have Havano. So, you know, there's a, there's always one other thing left out of those, you oh. know. So, um, Interesting. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. I think it's going to be in Paul's wheelhouse. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, so, that, so you Phil, know what I mean. Uh, so, Phil, um, just really quick before we close here, uh, an update on the rum. Debonair yeah. rum. Um, it's in the states. It's in our importer in in Florida, mm -hmm. and we're not. We're, I'm really. Put, that's why I'm here in Nashville too for another thing to talk to some people to try to start getting into distributors. Mm. It's. Um, I know I keep saying the same thing over the t all over, but it's just. It's a daunting task. No, and it's, a, it's like I got a you got to have someone full time on it. We hired somebody. Make a long story short, and I think it's going to work out within this year. By this year, by 2015, it should be all over the place. Okay, good, 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 good to hear. Good that. to hear. I can't wait to have debonair cigar with debonair rum. That's it. I can't wait and either. That's going to be awesome. That's going to be an awesome night. We will feature it here on the show for oh, sure. Oh yes, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, Phil, okay. thank you. Thank you very much for you, uh, appearing on the Story Geeks again. It was great to get an update from you. We're very much enjoying our debonair materials. Ciao for now. Ciao, ciao for now. Ci vediamo <laughs> dopo. Huh? Yeah. Thank you for the time. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Phil. Right. Thank you, thank you so much, With that, friend. we're going to take a short break and God come bless. back with our next uh, feature interview for the show. Mr. Dave Burke from Cigar Jukebox will be coming on the show next. Okay, gentlemen. Oh, what Thanks. a special cigar. Thanks, Phil. Thank you, Phil. Coop, isn't that au jus with the sweetness? 